Hey guys, it's Stephen here. The day after Manchester City absolutely pumped Liverpool 4 0. It should have been five, maybe even six, but definitely five. But anyway, we battered Liverpool and it was absolutely wonderful and I loved it and you loved it. So let's talk more about the wonderful thing that was that game last night. Today we're going to look at five things that I personally want to take from this game. There was loads of them being honest, loads more. We could talk loads um, about the tactical setup and all that kind of thing. But I want to look at um, a few points that felt particularly pertinent for me. Now, they may seem obvious, but they're always worth stressing when they're that important potentially. I'm going to start with Mr. Raheem Sterling um, because I thought last night was um, a really, really, really important game for him. Genuinely, um, potentially a bit of a turning point for him because we all know how much this guy struggled against Liverpool in the past. Uh, maybe a little bit unfortunate at times, but last night um, felt like the culmination of a few good weeks work for Raheem Sterling. Now, we all know that he struggled uh, with his form for the past few months in the Premier League. He hasn't been quite himself, but I think recently we started to see some signs that he's played his way back into form. A couple of goals here and there, you know, some nice finishes, and also a few kind of kind of like sparky little performances when he was running behind defences. But last night was his best performance in a long time, in my humble opinion. And the fact that it came against Liverpool was really, really useful. Now, it could be the fact that there was no fans there, no Liverpool fans kind of braying down people's backs and all that kind of stuff. So it was a neutral environment, so it really helped him. But it happened, and that will stick in his mind in the long term anyway. What I loved about Sterling last night is that, one, he won his personal battles against Gomez and so on, which was really sweet and really delightful to see. But two... It was that drive again, that drive where he got the ball in the middle and he was cutting through, running past people, going for goal. There was a confidence then, an aggression to his game that's probably been a little bit missing recently. He was beating people again. Sterling get his best, and I always seem to go back to Napoli away for some reason. That really sticks in the mind. Um, he's the kind of person where he's running at people. He's creating things. He has that tenacity. He has that strength. Um, he has that intelligence to his game. He's such a, a dynamic thinker in the way that he moves with the ball and the way he's always in the right place at the right time. And last night, we saw all those hallmarks and given he's always struggled against Liverpool um, to certain degrees last night could be a big game for him maybe a little bit unlucky that he didn't get a second goal he was going wide unfortunately but he earned his first he won a penalty and last night he was absolutely crucial uh, and hopefully this could be a good uh, good sign because obviously we're heading towards the latter stages of potentially of the Champions League fingers crossed and definitely already there in the FA Cup and him being informed uh, improves our chances of winning things exponentially, as does the next man. I have to talk about Phil Foden. I have to talk about him because... Um once again, he was asked more questions last night, and once again, he asked them. He answered them absolutely um, without question. He answered them brilliantly. Now, basically, uh, he was tasked with playing against the Premier League champions. They are the champions now. We have to admit that. Uh, well, because it's true. Not admit it. It's just we have to face up to that, I guess, is the words I'm looking for there. He was asked questions about whether he can step up against uh, a team of that quality. And not only did he step up, he was one of the best, if not the second best, maybe third best, but at least in the top three or four players on the pitch. Last night, Phil Foden was absolutely astonishingly good. Um, and he earned um, he earned the praise that he was getting. Uh, Phil Foden looks like he could be answering a few questions for us. Uh, <laughs> I got our clinicism in front of goal is better when Phil Foden's on the pitch. Our vibrancy, our closing down, our work rate, our intelligence is better when Phil Foden's on the pitch. And this isn't the Phil Foden of six, seven months ago. This is Phil Foden who's adapting more and more and more. If you cast your mind back two years ago, we had a very talented but very conservative, very cautious young um attacking midfielder, one who wanted to blend in, uh, tick all the boxes for the manager, but not do anything too flashy. And as times progress slowly and slowly, and you think about the Oxford game where he scored a nice goal or two, um, and you think about um, his goal against, against Schalke in the Champions League where he rounded the keeper, you start to see more uh, of this young player who starts to believe that he belongs. And now we've got a player who feels confident, he feels strong, he clearly feels like he's at this level. He's got the point now where um, he's effective, and he's showing what people who watch the academy sides uh, regularly saw he's showing that now at senior level um, and I also think he's benefiting the team in more ways than just his own brilliance because we know he's a great finisher we know he has quick feet we know he's got pace as well and he can dribble but I even think he's making KDB play better seriously I do believe that because not only does he help De Bruyne out with that high intensity and pressing and all that kind of stuff, and we've been missing that with, with um, without David Silver's energy these days. Silver of 17-18 could do that, but he can't do it now. 
uh, Foden can do that. But also, he drags the defence all over the place. He's constantly running in different directions. Um, he's making movements uh, that defenders can't follow. He's there for the one-two. He's drifting in between the channels. Um, he has that versatility to play across the front line. Uh, and when he's doing that, when he's making all this space, he's freeing up space for Kevin De Bruyne. And when he's got that pace as well, um, up in the counter-attack, he can actually keep up with Sterling and he can keep up with De Bruyne and Gabriel Jesus because uh, he's actually fast. He's very fast. It gives us so many more options breaking forward. And who's the best on the counter attack? De Bruyne with his passing. And De Bruyne can be uh, sure that Foden's going to keep up with him and find him. And also, when he's playing kind of on the right wing or the left or whatever, especially on the right wing, uh, De Bruyne can drift out to the right wing fully well knowing that Foden has the ability to drift in midfield and be comfortable there. De Bruyne doesn't have to second guess his instincts because of all due respect to Morris, who's a, a fantastic winger, he's top class. If um, De Bruyne drifts there and Morris goes to the middle, Morris isn't a natural midfielder and won't be quite as effective there, whereas Foden can go in there. And if you want, if you want to, De Bruyne can stay out on the right for 10 minutes and Foden will be more than comfortable there and we wouldn't lose anything. So basically... De Bruyne has a freedom then, because Foden has a freedom to his game, and it allows us to be so much more dynamic in general. He's absolutely fantastic, and maybe he could help us be a better team, actually a better team, and it feels so sweet that on the day that we lose Leroy Sane officially, we get someone like Phil Foden emerging to show how good he is. The world would have sat up and noticed last night that Phil Foden is a goal threat. He's potentially a world-class talent, and who knows how good he could be. He's only so young still, and he's got 15 years of his career ahead of us. This could be one of our best ever players, genuinely that promising. Thirdly, I want to touch on Benjamin Mendy because this guy's had so much criticism in recent history from our own fans as well. Some of it justified, admittedly, because there has been some mistakes and there's been two or three years of frustration from fans now. And I do understand that. I do honestly understand why people can be underwhelmed or frustrated. But last night, it showed why Mendy could potentially be worth that faith. Um, honestly, uh, have faith in it because I think other than that, like one kind of like edgy moment in the first couple of minutes which happens to everyone everyone is allowed in a, a big game uh, an unruffled moment early on it happened to the best of players it happened to everyone everyone gave the ball away a little bit and he did miscontrol it in his own area at one point um, but other than that I thought Mendy was intelligent I thought Mendy was really good I think he was better than Andy Robertson last night on the pitch now I'm not saying he's a better player but last night he was the better fullback during that game um, and I think one aspect I really want to pick up about Mendy is that people don't give him anywhere near enough credit for is honestly I think he's a much better passer than people realise, though he can be occasionally sloppy, and I think that's just personally a muscle memory thing, I think largely when you've had two years out, um, your sharpness will be affected until you've just basically got back into the swing of things fully, I know he's been playing and training for some time now, but playing intensely for a, a, a a certain amount of months is not exactly the same uh, as just being in training and playing in, uh, sporadically, and especially with that delay of the pandemic and stuff. But I think largely he's getting back to something close to his best, and Mendy at his best is such a worthwhile asset. And the one thing I want to talk about is his passing in particular. I think Mendy doesn't get enough in, um, credit for his intelligent passing. How many times have you seen Mendy where the defence is set for a cross, and what he does, instead of kind of playing down the obvious ball down the channel to the winger ahead of him or something like that, what he'll do is drill this kind of really interesting him. It's like a reverse cutting through the lines, but he does it kind of horizontally instead of vertically. Now, you think of Laporte or Kevin De Bruyne splitting past two or three lines um, with a kind of direct pass right through the middle. What Mendy has in a brilliant kind of... Um, it's a very unique attribute. I don't see this very often from players. He has this ability to kind of split the lines, but horizontally across the pitch. Instead, he will take out uh, two or three players on one side and cut it straight into the middle, which causes defences so many problems. The amount of times you see he kind of pass it with precision right into the feet of a player, right outside the edge of the area, and it causes problems. That's one of Mendy's most intelligent attributes, and he doesn't get credit enough for that. And we saw that quite a few times last night. We saw him as well involved in the second goal, winning the ball really well defensively, cutting into midfield, and he did it a few times where he cut into the centre of the pitch and was very, very intelligent with his possession, um, and that doesn't get enough uh, credit in my humble opinion, and also defensively last night, Mendy was solid, I'm sorry, but he was solid, he was good defensively, he was strong, um, he was good against uh, Salah, and we also saw a good cross or two as well. Mendy isn't perfect by any stretch at the moment, but Mendy does clearly have potential and we have to give credit where it's due. I like him. Um, something about Mendy it can be frustrating, I agree. But let's see if we can basically play the errors out of him. We've got basically a, a month or two now to see how he adapts, um, if he can get that consistency, if he can find that confidence. And I'm sorry, but learning something after two years out is very difficult. You make mistakes, you make errors because you're not... Fully 
fully there yet and your muscle memory isn't right. But a few more months of rondos in training, a few more months of confidence in games, and eventually those little moments of hesitation will surely, hopefully, seep away from his game. Because what we're seeing is a guy actually who can defend when he's confident, he is strong, and last night he showed how good he defensively is. Um... And he showed that he can pass intelligent. He showed that he does have a bit of physicality. He's maybe not quite as fast as he was, but he's still not slow. He's not slow at all. Uh, he's a good bulldozing fullback. And he does have that exceptional left foot still. I'm sorry, he put one pass in tonight, one crossing last night, which was delightful when he whipped it behind the defence again when someone should have been there to tap it in. And that's what he can do. Mendy, trust in him. Have faith. Be patient because there is a player there. An inconsistent player, yes. But when you see that potential, let us see what time can do. Time is a healer sometimes, and I'm not going to write him off. Last night, I thought it was encouraging. Fourthly, I felt like last night was a statement for Manchester City to make. Um, I want to draw attention to Bernardo's childish uh, but hilarious and brilliant uh, guard of honour antics where he stood pre-game and he was not willing to clap Liverpool's hall. He did not want to be there. And for me, even though it was funny, I think the, the message from that is that it clearly hurt him. It clearly stung some of the players to stand there. And I guess take it, take that kind of guard of honor, that humiliation. And that is important sometimes. Sometimes you need to be humiliated. But what we also saw, importantly, as a result, is a reaction from the team. Um, even though Liverpool started off pretty well, we ended up battering them. And that is a statement. Um, last, night, last, last night didn't really fully matter. But at the same time, it was a statement that Manchester City will be back next year and we can cause you trouble. And uh, do not feel invincible, Liverpool. Do not, because Manchester City still have absolutely loads of quality. And we saw the signs of a team that could be willing, hopefully, to rise to the challenge next year. Get solid defensively. Um, solve a few defensive issues here and there. And maybe, hopefully, become more clinical in front of goal. And this City side is still blessed with quality. Uh, City showed a message last night to Barcelona that the next season is not going to be a walk in the park. And maybe, also, they sent a message to themselves. Uh, showing what they can achieve this season. Liverpool have always been a bit of a hoodoo of ours and it's tough sometimes to get that off your back. And last night we answered some questions about our own mentality. We showed that we can still batter some of the best teams in the world. And given the Champions League coming up and given that we've got some big games coming up in the FA Cup as well, uh, potentially a couple of games there that could win us another trophy, uh, last night felt good for the self-confidence thing after the Chelsea game. It felt good for the belief of the side and it was very important. Finally, I want to talk about Mr. Eric Garcia. Now, I said in my match reaction last night, Garcia wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And I think pretending he was perfect would also be a disservice to him, of his development, of us as City fans. I think we can call it exactly how we see it uh, sometimes, and it doesn't make you less a fan. I think we can say Garcia was good, but he was also challenged, and sometimes he was tested beyond his limits. And that does not make him a bad player. And by his limits, I want to talk about the context of what I mean that. I mean his current limits. And his limits were contextual and ability wise and age wise contextually because he was against one of the best teams in world football if not the best forward line in world football at the moment he's they're very much up there that front three he was up against that so contextually it was a very hard game regardless of your ability and also contextually because of the fact that he's just come back from concussion and he's barely played age wise he's 19 years old so he has no right to be anywhere near experienced enough to deal with a front line like that and also because he's not played much football because he's only 19 years old anyway and ability wise because once again he's Eight, he's 19 he's nowhere near the peak of his ability at the moment and because obviously this game was such a big game for him um, I thought we saw last night Garcia concentrating so so much he clearly was trying his absolute best to be focused and because he was trying his best to be focused there was maybe one or two slight mistakes in there which can happen last night is the kind of game that will improve a young player of Garcia's ability immensely uh, you need those challenges to push you on to the next level and now when we play in the Champions League or we play against um, Arsenal or someone like that, we'll see his true level. He'll be better for that. He'll learn from that. He'll learn from those mistakes. And he was pushed very much to the edge of his ability last night. He was pushed and tested more than any youth team game could, more than any comprehensive romp against a mid-table side could. Last night, he was challenged. And did he have all the answers? No. But did he have most of them? Yes. He really did. He showed that he clearly is mentally uh, capable for this level of football. He showed that he wants to learn. He showed that he can hold his own against world-class forwards. And even though he wasn't perfect, he still came out shining. And that is credit to his ability as a defender.
He will start now, I reckon, most of the games towards the end of the season, as will Phil Foden. And because he's earned it, he's earned a chance to show how good he potentially could be. Uh, there are question marks about his physicality, and we won't know until we get those questions answered. But as it stands, he's earned that chance, and I think Guardiola will trust him. Last night was a big moment for him, and I absolutely loved watching him. Uh, struggle, but learn. The best players sometimes fail from a moment, but then learn and get better the next time. And that's what he did, and that's what we should be looking out for. It's easy when things are going well, but you trust a player by when things when the chips are down a little bit and how they react to it and last night it was great guys um go watch my match reaction video from last night i hope you enjoyed this video um i hope it all sounds good i'm using a new laptop for editing and hopefully it's going to look and sound great and this is a new mic which is on board and i'm loving it it's a beautiful little thing this is my laptop here look at this look at that oh the audio would have got very loud now because it's in there i love this little thing guys i love you all loads make sure to hit the subscribe button and i'll see you tomorrow for another video